You know, every week we get the opportunity to drive brand new cars on motoring, but this week is a first. Hello everybody, welcome to Motoring 97. I am driving a Chrysler Copperhead. How new is it? Well, new isn't exactly the word. This is a concept vehicle, which means it really doesn't exist. But you know, for so many years, concept vehicles were nothing more than cardboard cutouts that collected dust all year, while manufacturers went back to building boring cars. But as we're about to see this week, Chrysler came along and said, you know what? It could be good business turning dreams into reality. Automotive journalists test driving new vehicles. Hardly a new concept. I mean, that's their job. But nobody could recall ever being asked to drive not one, but four fully operational concept vehicles. The Dodge Copperhead, the Chrysler Phaeton, the Plymouth Pronto, and the Jeep Dakar. Now it's no secret that Chrysler has turned its financial fortunes around by simply building pretty cars that consumers wanted. And that includes turning concept into reality. I really do think that, you know, we got into this whole uh, period of the 70s where uh, we were caught up in this uh, era of regulation. It was fuel economy. It was everything was just like it was oppressive. and. Uh, and it doesn't have to be. I mean, the, the real uh, need and desire on the part of the customer for performance and sparkling and sportiness and feeling good, uh, that never went away. And uh, I think, you know, you know, we as the manufacturers went away from that, and it's just nice to see it come back. And it works. I mean, people are there. They will come. The newest concept car to join the production line is the Prowler. And Chrysler is hoping the Prowler will do for Plymouth what Viper did for Dodge. Prowler keeps our sense of focus sharp. Just as with Viper, this is an exercise in polarity. Those who don't get it or don't like it never will, and that's fine with us. But when you look back and you track the history of Dodge brand, for example, and, and what Viper was able to do for that, and how much that helped consideration of all the other products, whether it's the Ram or whether it's what we've done on the passenger cars, and in some ways, it provided a face for every one of those vehicles in that division. And Prowler does the same thing here. All of a sudden, you know, Plymouth is something that uh, you you say it with pride, and and uh, now all of a sudden, it's something that puts a whole different twist on what we're doing with the brand. Well, I think it's a great idea. I mean. Uh contrasted to GM who uh, just released the Malibu and its styling's taken quite a few knocks and because they're scared to make any um, extreme moves and it's a very bland styling and then you contrast that what Chrysler is doing is putting something like the Viper and then now the Prowler on the street it's it's a courageous move I think and I think they're reaping wonderful benefits from it I mean certainly Plymouth will Plymouth has had a reputation to be a stayed vehicle and now they have the Prowler probably the most outrageous vehicle ever built uh, on a production basis so I mean they can't help but win there have been over 100,000 inquiries about the Prowler, yet Chrysler plans to produce only 2,000 Prowlers by year end with 100 to 200 cars earmarked for Canada. Chrysler has utilized carryover parts in the Prowler from every vehicle in its model line to help turn the concept into an affordable reality with a price tag in the states of 39,000 or 53.5 Canadian. You can use the air conditioning system from, for instance, our, our Neon, and use the steering wheel from, from a, a, our Grand Cherokee, window switches, which don't have any relationship to, to the way the problem really is set to function. We can use existing components and save tooling dollars for doing that. 45% of the overall dollar value of a car uh, is based on carryover components that we didn't spend money to tool. But don't get the idea that the Prowler is simply a recycled vehicle. In fact, it has been described as technology dressed with passion as engineers use the vehicle as a test bed for new technology. Uh, and that facility has really enabled us to try some things. You know, these are all aluminum body panels. It's got aluminum extrusions in the frame. It's the first application of a 20-inch uh, wheel in the rear. It's got uh, a number of exotic technologies in the magnesium, for example, in the instrument panel and some of the bracing. Uh, so a lot of things that we wouldn't necessarily try on a production car, right down to things even like headlamps, you know, where, you know, you look at, you know, when we first went back to the guys and said, look, we're going to put the headlamps on the side of the car, and they said, you know, you've got to be kidding me, and, and uh, but here we are. It's nice to see the company coming back, and but 
the important thing is we're coming back with product. It's not coming back with finance programs. It's not coming back with marketing. It's coming back with things that people want. And that's, that's in the end, the, the ultimate compliment. How can one company be so different? Was it because they were so desperate at one point they decided to build pretty cars? Or? I think it's the people. Uh, I think it's Eaton. I think it's Gale. I think they have a bunch of engineers and car enthusiasts at the top of the line in Chrysler, and I think they got a bunch of bean counters over at GM. I, I really do. I mean, they've got a bunch of brand marketers who, uh, who uh, distribute Johnson & Johnson products, and now they're running the company. And um, it's obvious they don't give a darn about cars, and, and Chrysler people do.